Hey, welcome to the virtual college fair. Thank you for joining us. Today's session is, we'll be hearing from Earlham College. Um, a, a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenter at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered. Mm -hmm. And now I would like to hand it over to our presenter from Earlham College. Hello, everyone. Let me share my screen. Uh, but first, I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is Alex Painter. I am the Associate Director of Recruitment Operations at Earlham College. Uh, we are located in Richmond, Indiana. And just to give a little bit of background about myself, uh, so yes, I do work at Earlham. I work in the admission office, and it's, a, it's an office that I have worked in and for since the fall of 2013. I am an Earlham graduate. I graduated in 2010. I studied history and politics. So the hope of this presentation is that you get a really, really good sense of Earlham. And naturally, we would love for any of, any of you to watch this presentation. Of course, pique your interest uh, enough. Maybe you'd like to come visit us um, and you know, hopefully even apply for admission. But uh, as you can see, these are all of the, uh, the major topics that we are going to be discussing. So if there are any questions, as Annabelle mentioned, please, please uh, don't hesitate to put them in the Q&A box and I will answer them real time. But Again, this is being recorded. So if you wanna come back and watch this later, you can absolutely do so. So let's talk about Earlham College. I'm gonna let this video play in the background um, and you'll get to kind of see a little bit of Earlham in the, you know, uh, during the video, but we were founded in the year 1847 by members of the Religious Society of Friends, also known as Quakers. So just to get something out of the way quickly, you don't have to be Quaker to attend Earlham. Earlham is a small school, uh, about 900 students, but if we only allowed Quakers, we would be even smaller as there are fewer than 100,000 Quakers across the United States. Uh, so again, you don't have to be Quaker to attend Earlham. Less than 10% of our students actually are, but it is those Quaker tenants and those principles and practices, which we're gonna talk about here in a moment, that are, are still very, very prevalent to this day. So as I mentioned, we have 900 students. And one of the things that is just, I think, beautiful about Earlham College is just the sheer amount of diversity in which we have on our campus. So amongst our 900 students, we have nearly all 50 states and over 50 countries represented. So we are located in Richmond, Indiana, so which is East Central Indiana, near the Ohio border, about an hour east of Indianapolis. But we actually have more international students on our campus than Indiana students. Um, that's not to say we don't want all of the talented Indiana students that we can absolutely take. I was a, I'm an Indiana native myself when I went to Earlham College. But that is just something that we truly treasure about our campus community is just that it's a learning environment in which people join from all over the world. And they join for very intentional reasons. And I'm really happy to be able to, to share with you what some of those are. So the mission of Rome College, pardon me, is to provide the highest quality undergraduate education in the liberal arts, including the sciences, shaped by the distinctive perspectives of those religious society of friends. So yes, we are a liberal arts college. So just in case you're otherwise unaware, a liberal arts college essentially, um, kind of in a nutshell, is an approach to your academics in college that it, you're going to have your major, majors, minor, minors, but you're also going to take uh, a number of other classes in, in several other academic areas. So the idea is that your education is incredibly well-rounded. That is the hope of a liberal arts uh, education. And having been a product of one myself, I can honestly attest to that as well. So what are our campus pillars? Let's go, let's go by these point by point. So Number one, talented faculty and dedicated staff committed to professional preparation and student success. Our faculty are wonderful researchers, of course, but 
but very, very strong teachers as well, teaching faculty. Uh, in fact, our faculty have ranked in the top 25 in excellence at teaching at the undergraduate level uh, for the last, I believe, five years now. So you can expect that your teaching faculty is going to be an incredibly dynamic part of your academic experience. Students are active partners in learning. Earlham tends to skew, like a lot of liberal arts colleges, as much more collaborative. But in addition to that, nearly 90% of those aforementioned faculty members do collaborative research directly with students. So students are truly active partners in learning. And a lot of the students that tend to be attracted to Earlham are those who want to have a lot of agency within their education. Intentional global influences and connections. So we talked about a lot of the inner, like the, the globalism on campus as far as our student body, but we'll talk more about study off campus and study abroad here very soon. Those are, that's a, a hallmark of the Earlham College academic experience, but um, we travel to every continent. I don't wanna steal too much of my own thunder, so I'll table that one here soon uh, for, for a few more slides. But the power of our purpose, so Quaker values, principles, and practices, which include respect for persons, um, integrity, respect, community. Um, and those are those, those, again, those Quaker values that you don't have to be Quaker to subscribe to, but you do find on our campus in a myriad of ways. A distinctive community. So we talked about the diversity on campus. I am also, when we talk about, uh, excuse me, diversity, Let's also talk about um, more ways than just geographical diversity. How about uh, first-generation college students? Nearly a quarter of our students are first-generation college students. And in our first-year class, so the class here right now that are currently first years, nearly 40% of our students are students of color, in addition to, again, the 24% that are international. So very distinctive. But um, one of the things that I would, I would always consider, again, a, a hallmark of my experience at Earlham is uh, an experience that was both academically rigorous and supportive. So we'd like to think that our campus boasts rigorous academic, that challenge and support in equal measure. And we talked just a moment ago, I guess I did about the principles and practices. So again, respect for persons, integrity, peace and justice, simplicity and community. So those are, again, the prevailing concepts on our campus. So let's talk a little bit about the academic life, which, of course, proves to be a very large part of anyone's college experience. So we actually have more than 40 majors and minors. We are actually closer to 50 now. We've debuted some new and really exciting programs, including media and communications, exercise science, social services, quality science, data science, and equestrian management. Those are actually our newest programs and they've proven to be immensely popular even just in year one. But um, one of the things that is of note is that you don't declare a major or a minor or majors or minors, as I mentioned earlier, until you are a sophomore. We want our students to come in and truly experience the curriculum in its, in its fullest. Take things that you're passionate about and if your plans happen to change after taking a few classes in college, there is time for that. Um, so none of our students will, will again declare a major until their second year. That's not to dissuade you from what studying what you came to college to study. Uh, I went to Earlham to study history. That's exactly what I did. However, there is a statistic that kind of gets bandied about that nearly 80% of college students change their major at some point. So we try to build some time in to uh, our curriculum and our account, academic calendar. That way students can kind of experience it. And we are mainly based in four primary areas. So the social sciences, including history and politics, sociology, anthropology, psychology, education, and business to name a few. The natural sciences. So um, chemistry, biochem, uh, biology, uh, geology, environmental sustainability, engineering, physics, astronomy, computer science. Um, those are our natural sciences, which are of a particular strength to Earlham. We are actually ranked ninth in the country as far as the percentage of our students in the biological sciences who go on to receive PhDs. Uh, in addition, nearly 90% of our students are admitted to postgraduate health programs such as med school. 
Uh, Earlham is the smallest college in the country that has a full-time cadaver lab. So particularly for students who are interested in careers in the, uh, in the health, health field, um, it, it's truly a position of strength for Earlham. Oh, but in addition, 100% uh, of our students who are interested in going to law school gain admission to law school. Um, okay, so the humanities, as well as another one of our divisions. So the study of foreign languages, which we have several, uh, in addition to philosophy, religion, uh, ancient and classical studies or English. And then finally, the arts. So art, theater, and music. But again, regardless of what program you choose, you will be taking courses in all of the major academic divisions. In moving to classroom experience, the average class size is 13. You have a student to faculty ratio of nine to one here at Earlham. And in addition, um, in the Quaker education model, professors are called by their first name. We don't use titles. 96 and some change percent of our faculty have the terminal degree in their field, most commonly PhDs. However, there are no doctors or misses or misters or whatever there may be. Uh, we just simply utilize first names. And that is very intentionally because Earl wants to create a space where students can feel engaged in their in learning environment. And if students are more engaged, then hopefully they learn more. And if they learn more ergo, hopefully they leave Earlham and they go on and do really amazing things. So you put all of this together, the collaborative nature of Earlham, the Quaker education model, and we have ranked the last two years top 10 best classroom experience as ranked by the Princeton Review. So very, very affirming to us. Uh, we are, uh, again, very, we, we are very proud of this ranking. We do feel like it is a very, very telling aspect of the Earlham College experience is what actually happens in the classroom. Our goal is that all of our students, again, regardless of what program they may choose or programs they may choose to pursue, they will be equipped with these seven learning outcomes. I won't read them all, you can kind of see them, but we're gonna talk about diversifying our experiences here very shortly and how we apply that knowledge to the real world. We do that by experiential learning. So it's not to be redundant, but learning by experiencing, going off campus and, uh, you know, it might be on an internship or research or study off campus. That is an incredibly potent aspect of Earlham's education. So let's talk about experiential and integrated learning. Experiential, again, not to sound redundant, but learning by experiencing, but integrating it as seamlessly as possible. You're on and you're off campus learning. Again, fusing those aspects together to make a very, very, as I mentioned before, potent uh, education approach for you. So perhaps the largest part of experiential learning at Earlham is what we call our Earlham Advantage. This assures that every single student, regardless of what he, she, or they want to do when they graduate or what they want to, what they are currently studying, every student will have a funded, which is to say paid summer experience funded by the college. We call it our Earlham Advantage. So in the background here, we're gonna see Anna who uh, was interested in zoology. So she decided that she wanted to apply to zoos across the country. She actually landed an internship. It was not paid, not funded through the Cincinnati Zoo uh, where she got to interact with animals and do a lot of the, the human interfacing on behalf of the zoo in the uh, Wild Encounters exhibit. Uh, ended up being a wonderful experience for her. But again, she did not, it was not a funded internship, but Earlham funded her. And so the average stipend for one of these summer excursions is about $5,000. So students, 100% of our students have access to this. I can only hope that 100% of our students are actually taking advantage of it, but uh, it can be anywhere you'd like for it to be doing anything. Internship, research, a lot of our students actually self-designed special projects that are particularly uh, of a particular interest to them. Students work in nonprofits, they work in for-profits, banks, hospitals. Truly, the student gets to write their own experience for an entire summer. So it could be in a big city, it could be in your hometown. You can be by yourself, you can go in a group. It, it truly, again, not to, not to just beat the dead horse here, but 
the experience is truly customizable to each student. So because it does bear repeating, the Earlham Advantage provides at least one funded internship, student faculty research experience, or project to every student. You won't be alone in planning this either. You can get uh, advising from our EPIC centers, which we're going to see here in a moment, as well as career coaches to really sharpen and refine your summer experience again to make it as impactful for you as it possibly can be. So you can go individually like Anna, or you can go in small groups. Like here is a group of students uh, interested in, in public health who uh, took a summer and volunteered at a underfunded hospital in Costa Rica. So again, all of these students receive their EPIC funding, their Earlham Advantage funding, pardon me, and um, kind of traveled together and made a really, really awesome summer out. So when I talked about those EPIC centers, EPIC is an acronym. So it's Earlham's program for an integrated curriculum. So again, integrating your facets together as seamlessly as possible. Here are our centers. So any student can go to any center to just kind of gain advising or uh, insight, uh, anything again, to make your off-campus learning as robust as possible. <clears throat> In the summer of 2019, here, now summer of 2020, of course, was a bit of a wash as far as travel is concerned, but here is a bit of where our students were able to go just in the summer of 2019. As you can see, quite a wide variety of locations. Uh, for instance, Bahamas, we sent students to the Bahamas who, you know, who had a particular interest in, uh, who studied, were studying biology at Earl, but in particular really enjoyed marine biology. So that is, um, where they went. They, Bahamas, I have heard, is absolutely lovely. I've never been, but they got to study sea turtles and iguanas in particular. So at the end of the day, the Earl of Advantage is truly distinct and our signature program because there are still only a literal handful of schools that say, not only will you have the internship or the research, but we will pay you to do that. And so that's truly what still makes our program um, set apart from many, many others. So that's during the summer, my mouse cursor here. Um, something else that is, again, a hallmark, a staple of the Earl of Education is our off-campus uh, study or study abroad, as it's also commonly called. Uh, we say off-campus study because not all of our programs are, in fact, abroad. We do have some programs that our domestic here in the United States as well. But all told, nearly two thirds of Earlham students will participate in a year long semester, pardon me, or year long program. And our programs routinely rank among the top in the entire country. So here is actually um, just a sampling of some of the places our students are able to go. Uh, we travel to every continent, including Antarctica, um, Antarctica is a place where we sent some students and faculty not too terribly long ago, but some of our most popular places, our most popular locations include New Zealand, is incredibly popular, as is the London program and the Greece program. But truly, um, we have programs that really cater towards every individual major, but you don't have to be of a specific major to go on any of these programs. And the majority of these are self-standing Earlham programs. So you'll go with a small Earlham cohort of students, Earlham faculty members, and you'll return to campus with um, 18 Earlham credit hours, which is incredibly uh, important as well. All right. So let's move on to the next one. Doesn't look like we have any questions just yet. Perhaps I'm answering all of them. So awesome. <laughs> let's go to student life. Uh, a very potent aspect as well of anyone's college experience, but also of particular importance at Earlham. So of our 900 students, 94% of our students live on campus. So as it were, it's really important then to surround our students who live on campus. This semester is a little bit different given the uh, pandemic. However, um, it doesn't change the fact that the vast majority of our students will indeed live on campus. But we have uh, over 60 student-led organizations or student clubs that kind of have the following themes. Uh, service clubs, cultural clubs, political clubs, religious clubs. Uh, we have 
15 rec sports, and as well as special interest clubs. If a student wants to connect with other students who share a similar interest and there's no club for it, well, then you can actually start a club. In fact, one of my, uh, the clubs I was in as a student at was the Student Activities Board. And one of the committees I served on was literally doling out funds to clubs, uh, brand new clubs. Um, you know, uh, people who got together said, I wanna start this club or that club. And if we could get uh, $150 to help promote it, that'd be fantastic or to buy equipment or supplies, that'd be awesome. And so uh, that was actually one of the cool things I got to do uh, at Earlham was support new and burgeoning clubs. In addition, we do have 15 NCAA men and women's intercollegiate athletic teams. We compete at the NCAA Division III level. Uh, we compete in the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference, so mostly based in Indiana. Well, it actually is based in Indiana, Ohio, and Transylvania University down in Lexington, Kentucky. So this is our, um, uh, this is our offering of sports. About 35% of our students are student athletes. So um, that is something that is a large part of our uh, campus culture and campus community is the presence of sports. Um, again, and also a, a good source of school spirit, of course. So of course, this is a member of our field hockey team. This is actually Megan. Uh, she was an excellent field hockey player at Earlham. I'll be honest, when I got to, uh, got to college, I got to Earlham, I actually had never seen this sport played before. Um, but it's an awesome sport. I've become quite a fan in the in recent years or 10 years or 14 years since I graduated and joined Earlham's campus respectively. So when I was talking about the, ge the geographical diversity on campus, it probably would come as no surprise that we have tons of religious diversity on campus as well. And we have student groups um, that support students who are Christian, uh, Buddhist, Jewish, uh, Islam or Friends, which is another name for Quakers. We do have a Quaker meeting house on campus, uh, which is a meeting house is where Quakers go to worship. Uh, however, there is no religious requirement. You are not required to go to meeting. You go to meeting if you'd like to go. And we do have Quaker meeting for worship on Sundays. And a lot of times our students or our faculty members will speak. And it's uh, a really cool event. But again, no one is required to go. Students can experience faith or spirituality at their own speed, if at all, on our campus. Residence life, very important aspect as well. We have eight residence halls, also known as dorms. And as I mentioned, most students live on campus all four years, 90 plus percent do. In addition to the residence halls, we have actually also themed and friendship houses. In the same vein as our student clubs, they carry themes to them, whether they be uh, cultural themes, uh, political themes, academic themes, special interest themes, whatever have you, um, which I guess is my way to say, they just don't have Greek themes. So we do not have fraternities or sororities on our campus, but we do have themed houses. In addition to the residence halls and themed houses, we also have an apartment complex on our campus. It's called Campus Village, but it's otherwise affectionately known as Brick City. So between those three major uh, avenues, the residence halls, the houses, and the apartments, as I mentioned, that is where we get the vast majority of our students living on campus. So I'll let this video play in the background. This is actually a virtual well, a video tour, I guess, of one of our first year residence halls called Bundy Hall. And if you're keeping score at home, Bundy Hall is actually the second oldest building on campus. It was built in 1907. The only building on campus that actually is older than Bundy is, um, is our uh, observatory, which was built in 1861. It is on the National Registry of Historic Places. Bundy's really neat, just in the sense that it is such a long-standing tradition at Earlham, Bundy Hall is, that there's like kind of this fervent alumni base who all, you know, kind of bond over the fact they all lived in Bundy, which is really kind of cool. You know, that's one of the cool perks of, of college is being able to tap into really kind of distinct alumni bases, even within your small college alumni base. So most rooms are doubles. We do have singles and triples, but in keeping step with our community uh, pillar and community uh, principle, 
we, all of our first year students will in fact live together. Uh, that's actually a change since I was at Earlham when students kind of just lived wherever it was, uh, you were placed. So um, first year students live in the first year residence halls. That way they can kind of again, make friends, an important part of the college experience. So as I mentioned, we are located in Richmond, Indiana, which is here in East Central Indiana. We sit on about 800 acres. So 200 of which is Earlham proper with the academic buildings, the residence halls and the athletic fields. 600 is actually just a large expansive wooded area. Uh, we call it back campus affectionately. So it actually presents a field laboratory for our environmental sustainability and biology uh, programs. But we also have a cross country running trail back campus and we have the only student run equestrian center in the entire country. So there's actually a horse trail back there as well. Now there's 36,000 people who live in Richmond. So that makes Richmond, I think an ideal size as far as having all the staples that any student may need in a college town. Uh, some really cool culture, including that Richmond is the smallest city in America that has both a civic orchestra and a civic theater. Uh, and we also are the birthplace of recorded jazz music. So if you love jazz, we have a really amazing jazz historical site called Jeanette Records here. But it's large enough that again, it has those staples. It has some really neat culture and history, but small enough that it is incredibly accessible to our students. Now, if you're like, but I'm from a big city and I want to be nearby a big city. If you were to draw a four hour driving radius around Richmond, you could actually make it to 10 major metropolitan areas. Some of the close noteworthy ones include Dayton, which is about well, a little less than an hour away, Indianapolis, which is just a little over an hour away, and Cincinnati, which is about an hour and a half. But we're also nearby Fort Wayne, Indiana, um, Detroit, Michigan, Chicago, Illinois, uh, Cleveland and Columbus, Ohio, and Lexington and Louisville, Kentucky. So truly very, very close to a lot of those major metropolitan areas. And our students really do take advantage of being nearby. All right, now for the most enthralling portion of this presentation, I know the admissions and financial aid slide. So particularly as we find ourselves in a very much a COVID world, we strive to make this aspect of your college search and the Earlham College Search in particular as simple as we can. So what do we require? Well, we require an application. Yeah, big surprise there, but we utilize the common application, which uh, us and hundreds, hundreds of other schools also utilize. So the idea is as a consumer, uh, you know, a consumer or a college student looking for a college, you can absolutely jump on common application and maybe you can you, well, you could fill out one application and you can send it to multiple colleges, any number of the colleges that utilize the platform. We also have our own uh, application, which is the Earlham College application. And uh, like most schools, we have our own platform as well. So within the application, you're gonna list a lot of biographical information, uh, extracurricular activities, you know, to really detail your life and passions outside the classroom, as well as a personal essay also called a personal statement or a writing sample. At the end of the day though, it is an essay. So we also require a high school transcript. Again, probably nothing too seismically surprising about that. Where we are a bit different though, is that we are test score optional. And we've been test score optional for about a decade now. So we do not require the SAT or the ACT for our domestic students. Um, if, uh, again, we don't require it for admission or merit-based scholarship. So if you take them, if you take one of them multiple times, we will super score. And if you take them both, we will use whichever one is higher on the concordance table. But we also will, you know, again, read your application without one. We are, we employ a very holistic review. And the uh, test score is just a very small part of it. And so if we don't have it, that is perfectly okay. We can ascertain if a student is a good fit for Earlham, both social and academic or otherwise, uh, just you know, without the test score. We also have a do no harm policy. So if you submit a test score, that's not necessarily helpful to your admission or uh, merit-based scholarship. We actually also 
um, not consider it. Again, just to make sure our students are given the best and clearest path to admission in merit-based scholarship. We also uh, require one recommendation letter from a teacher and one from your high school counselor. A high school counselor recommendation is also called a secondary school report. Now, if you're an international student applying for admission, we do require an English proficiency test. So whether it be a TOEFL, an IELTS, or an SAT. And in addition to that, a financial certification by way of the ISFA, which is the International Student Financial Aid Application, which in layman's terms, I suppose, is kind of like the FAFSA for international students. Now, when you apply for admission, you are automatically being considered for merit-based scholarships. So there is no separate process for applying for those. So that's really awesome. 100% of our students are admitted with scholarship and our scholarships start at $20,000. So again, uh, every student is admitted with a scholarship and those scholarships start at $20,000. We actually have a new Heartland scholarship for students who live within our general vicinity, which is actually another $2,000 per year. Now, in addition to merit-based scholarships, all students are encouraged to complete the FAFSA, so the free application for federal student aid. If you finish that and you share that information with our financial aid office, you can also be considered for need-based aid. So as a first-generation college student myself who went to Earlham, as far as these two major areas of funding is concerned, I had much more need-based aid in my financial aid award than merit scholarship. Um, however, a lot of students find that the opposite is true, but ultimately we want to use both of these avenues to make our offer of admission as compelling as we absolutely can. So we have two major deadlines. Our early action deadline is December 1st. And if you apply by December 1st, you're given priority consideration for invitation to scholarship day. So we have a scholarship day in February where students can compete for an additional scholarship in the areas of art, theater, music, as well as civic engagement and diversity leadership. So we have uh, additional avenues of funding for students who are interested in pursuing those in college, even if you're not majoring and minoring in art, theater, or music. If you've shown a propensity uh, in any of those areas in your high school career, and you know, if you just wanna continue it, even if it's just a passion or hobby of yours in college, you are still eligible for scholarship day. So early action, again, December 1st, and then regular decision is March 1st. And in addition to this virtual event, we also have other virtual events as well. So I suppose by the time folks see this, <laughs> um, some of you may uh, note that the top event there, anti-racism in Earlham's classrooms would have already passed, but we still have other events that you can take advantage of, uh, including when we're talking earlier about those Epic Centers. Um, we have, we'll have representatives from all of the Epic Centers to speak to our students. And we also have an upcoming fall open house here in a couple weeks. So if you want to, take a part of any of those events, again, just easily visit earlham.edu slash visit. So these are our virtual events and we are offering in-person on-campus events as well. All right, so put all of this together and the class of 2019 had a career outcome, whether working or in grad school within six months of graduation, at almost 93%. So uh, we were, we're always looking to build on that, but that is an exceedingly high rate. Uh, some of the most popular job uh, sectors, I should say, is includes education, research, software engineering, and healthcare services. But you will find Earlham students every single graduating class in all of the major job sectors. And not to mention our fervent alumni base as well. So here is some of our uh, more, more recent alums who are out doing uh, really amazing things. And so this student actually, uh, she competed for a job at Microsoft and I can't remember the exact number, but it was literally, she was hired for this position uh, being just a couple, uh, one of a couple out of a thousand, thousands of applicants. And so she was a computer science major. 
But again, as you can see, our students are doing all kinds of wonderful things, whether they're starting their own businesses or doing research in a lab, whatever have you. And I would just make special note of Samaya here, who she was actually Earlham's second Rhodes Scholar in recent memory. So our one we had, uh, I believe it was four years ago, uh, he was actually the first Palestinian to be named a Rhodes Scholar, which is just amazing. Samaya, who studied peace and global studies at Earlham, which is kind of one of those Earlham specific programs, she is actually the first Afghan, not just Afghan woman, but Afghan period to be named to this prestigious scholarship. And so uh, we're very proud of her, obviously, for very, for very obvious reasons. And that actually ends the outcome. So I'm going to stop my share here briefly. All right. It doesn't look like there are any questions, but please note that you can get a hold of myself. Again, my name is Alex Painter or any of my staff here in the admission office. We are here to help you and your family through this college search process. It is a process. There's actually over four, well, right about 4,000 colleges and universities across the United States. Earlham is just one. So we want to, of course, help you find the best fit for you. Uh, naturally, I'd love for every single student I meet to go to Earlham, but I also know that that's just not feasible. <laughs> uh, so please let me know uh, how we can best help you. Great, thank you so much, Alex. Um, we thank you for your time and uh, the information that you were able to provide. Um, and for um, everyone else, um, thank you for joining us. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We appreciate any feedback you can provide. And also this is just one of the many sessions being hosted. Um, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find the session's recordings as well as all other session recordings at the same website where you registered. So thank you, um, Alex, again, for your time. And um, we hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Thank you.